Turn with me to John chapter 11. And we come to the miracle itself of the raising of Lazarus. Some have said the miracle of miracles, very wonderful, and heard it speak by others. If they would believe that this was true, they would believe, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is why it is given to us, why the Lord did it, uh, so that people in his day would believe, believe in him, that he was the one sent of God, and that people in every age believe the record given here uh, that he is the one sent from God, he is the saviour, he is the resurrection and the life, and worthy of our trust. But it is instructive, as all the miracles are, uh, in its detail. Uh, it is interesting precisely what is done, but also, uh, as I hope to come on, the reaction, both of those that believed in him and also the hardening uh, in their purpose uh, of Caiaphas and the priests and the Pharisees to put him to death. But let me just begin from verse 38. Uh, Jesus, therefore again groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Still, in some measure, groaning, I believe, with a sympathetic sorrow uh, for Mary and Martha and for the Jews, but coming to deliver them and to as it were, overturn that sorrow, which is ultimately he will always do for all his people in our sorrows, that they have an end, that they will ultimately be made up for. There will be no tears, no sorrow, no crying in glory. All will be eternal and fullness of joy. Uh, and that the great end, in one sense, of his work to undo the serpent's work to bring his people safely out of sorrow, out from death, out from the curse, into eternal glory. And even in this life, it is his uh, wonderful work to comfort uh, and to help and to deliver from sorrow uh, for his children, uh, to bring us uh, safely through to that eternal home. But Jesus, therefore, again, groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It does not mean, does not know, nor does not care about our difficulties. He most certainly does, but he has all things in his hand and has our deliverance uh, planned. It was a cave and a stone lay upon it, as was generally the custom for the wealthier Jews, uh, a cave stone cave uh, there in preparation laid uh, as Abraham did with him uh, Sarah and then himself and uh, then Isaac and Jacob at the cave of Machpelah waiting for the resurrection of the great day their great hope and our great hope as well and the Lord simply says take ye away the stone now it is interesting that he tells the people to take away the stone and then he tells them at the end to uh, take off the grave clothes, uh, that he will not do what men can do. Obviously, he could have stood uh, and said, Lazarus, come forth, and the, the stone could have moved by itself and Lazarus could have come out uh, and miraculously, wonderfully, all the grave clothes could have just fallen off him. But no, he tells the people, take ye away the stone. And then, uh, and then uh, to take off, Jesus saith unto them, loose him and let him go. And that there is the Lord gives to his people work to do in the saving of lost souls. There are certain things we cannot do. We cannot, as he shows here, we cannot give life to the soul 
Only Christ can impart life, new life to the heart. Uh, but we are to preach the gospel. We are to go out. We are to make the gospel known so that men may hear and men may believe. And as God works in their hearts and opens their ears, gives them new life, so they will believe, so they will come uh, to salvation. And also, after they have come, it is the church's duty to make disciples uh, of those who have responded to the gospel, to, as it were, take off uh, the, the grave clothes, take off the, uh, the ways of this world to teach and instruct uh, and to tell them all the things that God has commanded us to do, as he says in Matthew 28, make disciples of all nations, teaching them all things whatsoever I've commanded you to do, that there is work for the people of God, uh, both in preaching the gospel and in teaching and training up those who respond. But the imparting of life to the soul that is dead, to the soul that is in darkness, only Christ can do, and why we pray, why we uh, pray and ask for his blessing upon his word, why we in one sense don't do things like an, an altar call, uh, we don't force people or try to manipulate them to respond to the gospel, we leave it with the Lord, the Holy Spirit, to work in their hearts, and if he is working they will most certainly come and they will most certainly call out to him uh, for forgiveness and pardon. We may show them and tell them how they are to pray and so on, but we cannot, we dare not manipulate them in such a way that we, uh, in one sense, compel them to make a response that may well not be genuine. Some Evangelists confess that maybe only 10% of such responses are actually ever genuine. Uh, but it is the Lord who gives life uh, and the Lord who imparts life directly to the soul. And we would have each individual respond uh, as the Lord gives them, moves in their hearts to do so. But uh, he, he is, in one sense, economical, as some call it, with his miracles, uh, but it is all in his wisdom. God gives his people. He will not do for us what we can, in one sense, do for ourselves. He will help and will bless in many ways wherein we have no strength, we have no ability to do what we need to do, uh, but he gives us work to do. So he says, uh, take ye away the stone. Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh, for he hath been dead four days. It would appear, without being too harsh on Martha, that she has not fully grasped what the Lord has come to do. Uh, Martha often gets a bad press, which I think is unfair. She was a very godly woman, obviously slightly different temperament to Mary, but a godly, uh, godly woman. And uh, he simply reminds her, Jesus saith unto her, said I not unto thee, that if thou wouldst believe, thou should see the glory of God. Now this may refer back to, to the message he possibly sent them, saying, this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God. And uh, it is a principle, I think, and it is often, it is, I find it a reproof to myself that uh, if you wouldst believe, thou should see the glory of God. We do need to believe. We need to trust the Lord to see the glory of God. And we will see the glory of God if we will trust him. Uh, now, obviously, that applies uh, more fully with eternal glory. If we hold fast to the faith, we shall 
uh, be taken to be with the Lord uh, and ever with the Lord. And though our faith may uh, be weak at times, yet if we hold fast, he, we shall see the glory of God. But also in one sense, as here before our very eyes, uh, if we trust the Lord day by day and in difficulties, we shall see the glory of God. He will help. He will deliver. He will uphold. He will provide at times. We will undoubtedly see the glory of God. It may not be or it won't be in quite the same way as a miraculous uh, manifestation of his power as raising of Lazarus. But in one way or another, we shall see his glory. Answers to our prayers. Uh, strength when we are weak, uh, blessing uh, in other ways, in provision, uh, in uh, care, in wisdom, uh, in, in the work of God. Uh, we shall see his hand upon us. It's precious. It was uh, precious just doing the, the, just visiting just a few doors last Saturday uh, uh, in, in fear and trembling often. Uh, but the first door was a lady very willing to talk who had cancer. Uh, and it was a precious opportunity to, to speak with her. She was very willing to listen, to encourage her, to look to the Lord. Uh, and she was not offended uh, and, and a precious uh, opportunity uh, and leave her with, with uh, some literature. Uh, and then we... we uh, we do meet a family who might send their children. They may not. Uh, then we met somebody uh, who works with John and uh, were able to talk with her. Uh, we showed her the leaflet and uh, she said, oh, I know about that church. <laughs> and, uh, but all these things, they're little things, not miraculous, but little providences that uh, uh, show us uh, that we are in one sense walking in the Lord's way. And it is the same for all of us day by day. We look to the Lord, we pray, the Lord helps, the Lord blesses in our work, in, the, in our families, uh, if we would trust and hold fast to the Lord. Uh, so he encourages her, then they take away the stone. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I know that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. Now he doesn't actually call upon the Lord and say, Lord, please set Lazarus free, bring him back to life. He will speak directly himself to Lazarus. But he shows that he is doing it with the Father. He and the Father are one. And to show, he's specifically saying these words to show that he is, uh, he is the one sent from God, that they may believe that thou hast sent me that there is no imposter, that he is calling upon his father, he has called upon his father, and that he is doing it not only with his power, but with his father's power. And so he cries, Lazarus, come forth, and Lazarus comes out. And uh, this is, it tells us why the Lord did these miracles, why all his miracles were done, so that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And so that they, meaning not just the people then, uh, but in every age may believe that Christ is the Son of God, that he is the resurrection and the dead. Uh, so it is recorded, honestly recorded, so it is given to us so that we may believe. Now I know we long to see the Lord's power displayed, but if we were to raise the dead, uh, it would, and you may disagree with me, but 
it would take away from Christ's glory. And this is done so that he is shown to be the son of God. Uh, and if men are to do miracles, as some believers think we are, and it is simply a lack of faith that we don't, if we were to do miracles, in actual fact, they would take away from the testimony of the gospel and from the glory of Christ, because these miracles are given to set him forth before men. And uh, uh, you may say, I am simply unbelieving. I don't believe, honestly, those that say they have raised the dead or they know of others who have raised the dead. I don't know of any real and true uh, raising uh, of the dead, but I do believe this uh, of our Savior because it was given to show that he is the Son of God and otherwise just a few times to the apostles to show that they are his special messengers. They are the ones to whom he would give uh, the word of God, they would write the New Testament scriptures. And in the same way, in all human history, miracles are given sparingly and to show particular people to be particular special messengers from God. Now, I, I, I don't wish to discourage anybody from praying for healing. God calls us to pray for healing. And we must pray for healing. And God does heal in answer to prayer. But miracles like this, where it cannot be explained naturally by any natural laws, uh, like the, the feeding of the 5,000, genuine, what I would say, are real miracles. Uh, the Lord does and won't do, I believe, today, uh, because they are given and were given for a specific purpose. Now, I know people will criticize and say, oh, you're grieving the Holy Spirit and so on. Uh, and uh, there are those that will go out on the streets and pray for others for healing. But the Lord, uh, in all honesty, does not hear them, does not answer them with miracles. And uh, it is rather, uh, I would rather that we have a right trust in the Lord and in his promises than be deceived by those that, uh, in all honesty, I think, are deceivers. But uh, here, given to us, that they may believe that thou hast sent me, and a wonderful testimony to the Lord Jesus Christ. He simply cries, Lazarus, come forth. It is, it is his own power, his own word of power and Lazarus comes forth. He that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes. Wonderful, glorious miracle. And in the same way, the Lord will give life to every individual sinner who responds to the gospel. It is because Christ in one sense has said to them, uh, so and so, come forth. We are dead in trespasses and sins, uh, until we are quickened, until quickening means made alive by the Lord. And uh, he is the one, he is the one to whom we look, that he would save lost sinners uh, and those that are truly, uh, truly given life by him will most certainly be saved. Uh, regeneration, uh, as it's called theologically, uh, but a wonderful miracle. And the Lord simply says, take, uh, loose him and let him go. Take off the grave clothes. And very rightly, many believed on him. Verse 45, then many of the Jews which came to Mary and had seen the things which Jesus did, believed on him. And I wish, without wishing to labor the point too much, many people over the centuries who have read these things in the word of God, have believed on him. Many of the, uh, much of my seeking the Lord was reading the Gospels. The first, the, the most obvious and plain uh, conclusion one comes to is that he is the son of God. And uh, many believe because these things 
because he did these things and they recorded for us. And uh, I must divert slightly. I almost, <laughs> uh, I read it last Sunday evening, this Luke chapter 16. And uh, the last verse where Abraham says to the rich man uh, in hell, if they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Uh, and that now we have Moses and the prophets and we have all the, uh, the New Testament, the record of the Lord's wonderful miracles. If they will not hear that, those, they will not respond, though one goes out on the streets, though you may pray, and somebody is raised to life. Miracles, we don't need miracles today to win souls. We need the work of the Spirit of God in hearts and a faithful preaching of the gospel. But truly, these things are given that we might believe and that the Jews did. Many of them believed on him. But as it says, but some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. Some, whether innocently or, or not so innocently, go and tell, in one sense, as a witness, uh, in the providence of God, as a witness to the Lord's enemies. And they then gather together. It would appear to be a gathering of the Sanhedrin, then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, What do we? For this man doeth many miracles. They do not deny it. They cannot deny it. They do not deny that he has done many miracles. But they still oppose him. And uh, men cannot ultimately deny it. But uh, their fear is that the Romans will come because people will follow him and will then take away their nation. If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and our nation. It's remarkable their unbelief that if, uh, if he is the Messiah, surely he will be victorious over the Romans, but uh, that's not the way their mind is thinking. And then uh, one of them named Caiaphas being the high priest that same year said unto them, ye know nothing at all, nor consider that it is expedient for us that one man should die for the people and that the whole nation perish not, saying it is much better therefore that Christ, the Lord Jesus be put to death so that the Romans will not come and take away our nation, our people. But John gives this comment, and this spake he not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation, and not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one the children of God that were scattered abroad. And it is very fitting that the high priest would be the one who would suggest this, be the one who would, in one sense, set forth uh, that Christ should be a sacrifice for his people. Uh, and yet, in one sense, the height of sin, the, the greatest of wickedness, to conspire to put to death uh, their king, their Messiah, the Son of God. But as one commentator points out, here is the remarkable uh, sovereignty of the Lord. Uh, Caiaphas, John points out that this spake he not of himself. Uh, he prophesied that Jesus should die for that nation, but it's not a prophecy as Isaiah gave, as under a sort of willing inspiration of God, uh, but not meaning to, he makes this prophecy. And how the Lord uses uh, sovereignly in ways we cannot uh, fully understand, uses wicked people to fulfill his purposes. Caiaphas, 
thought of this himself willingly, thought of it, planned it, thought it was a good idea, set it forth in the council. Uh, and yet it was the Lord uh, overruling and uh, causing them to do it so that his purposes would be fulfilled. And uh, Peter, when he preaches in Acts uh, 2, uh, he says precisely that, that they by uh, wicked hands, he does not um, pardon what they have done, uh, but says it was all it's part of the counsel of God. Uh, verse 23 in Acts to him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. Uh, God had planned it, but they had fulfilled it. And uh, God, I, I don't wish to terrify you, God protects his people and plans blessing for his people, but we should not be overly troubled when the wicked do prevail. Uh, all is in the Lord's plan and purpose. And if the greatest of sins, the greatest of wickednesses, the killing of the Savior, the putting uh, of him to death was all part of the plan and purpose of God, how much more little smaller sins that men may do and how much more we may trust uh, in the goodness and the almighty power of God and his wisdom that he allows such things uh, to come to pass. Now it does not mean that uh, when men hurt us or sin against us that is less uh, painful uh, but we are able to trust in the Lord and know that he will work all things for our good and ultimately deliver us. And we need not take things into our own hands. And here Caiaphas unwittingly uh, setting forth why the Lord would die, to suffer and to die in the place of others, in the place of his own people, uh, die for a nation not just of the Jews, but all that he should gather together in one, the children of God that were scattered abroad in every nation and every age. Uh, not, not to be too harsh, not so much for every individual, but for all uh, who would be his. Uh, but set forth here and the Lord using wicked men to fulfill his purposes. Then from that day forth, they took counsel together for to put him to death. Jesus therefore walked no more openly among the Jews, but went thence unto a country near to the wilderness into a city called Ephraim, and there continued with his disciples. He would not unnecessarily provoke them. Uh, and, uh, he would not go up until it was time. He went away uh, as it were, out of the way, so there would be no immediate conflict. And we are called in the same way, whatsoever lieth in you, be at peace with all men. The gospel will offend. Uh, we cannot but help it. The raising of Lazarus both resulted in, in many believing, but also in others being hardened in their opposition. And... Uh, we should not be surprised that the world hates us, that men are hardened in their opposition to the gospel, but we may trust that all is for the glory of God. And uh, our brethren in other lands where they face much more danger, exhibit much greater faith often than we in uh, uh, trusting the Lord in their difficulties, but knowing that it will work out for a witness to him. And uh, may he help us not to be ashamed of our Savior. May he help us to trust in him, to look to him, to give new life to dead souls, uh, to work that, in one sense, greatest of miracles that we see and the Lord will do time after time, 
to give new life to dead souls, to, to, to truly save the lost, a wonderful, precious miracle that will abide forever and uh, help us not to be uh, unbelieving, but to trust in him and ultimately to see his glory. Amen. Hello.